Hello and welcome to Mew and Taxes 2.0, the Heirs to the Empire campaign. I'm Count Christo, and we're going to be playing this fantastic mod today as Ming. So, the uh, small history lesson, we remember in 1231 when the Mongols came in and smashed the Yin dynasty, conquered most of northern China. A few years later, actually quite a few years later, they came and conquered the rest of southern China. And this, the Yuan, Great Yuan, was a... Uh, Kind of like a client state that the Mongols set up to rule over China for them. And there's just been an event known as the Red Turban Rebellion, one of the wars of which is going on here, in which China gets all totally fractured. And then, historically, Ming emerges triumphant and establishes their own dynasty, which then goes on to last many hundreds of years. So we're going to see if we can pull that off, if we can make Ming conquer all this land and all that stuff. So Pops, as you know, hugely, as you, I hope, you know, if you've seen any other Mew and Taxes videos or played it yourself, Pops are hugely important in Mew and Taxes. And if I click here, you'll see we have an insane number of population. I think this, this might be the largest city in the world at this point, which is pretty cool. We've got basically no other urban population, though. Everything is here. There's everything here, including all the infrastructure, and there's mu very little else anywhere else. And we start with paved net road networks. Nice. Yep, yeah, so there's very little anywhere else at all, uh, except in our in our glorious capital of Zhuan... Jianning? I'm not sure. This place. <laughs> the capital. Oh, I misclicked. Wrong place. Ying Te Ying Tain. Something like that. Right, we start off at war, so first order of business, win this war, and I suppose reconquer all these cores we have. Yuan, incidentally, has cores over all of China, which is a little scary. Um, they also have a bunch of tributaries. I guess we can take tributaries, since we are in the uh, Eastern Culture Group, I don't know. There's a couple of cool decisions down here, so for example, we can... Uh, let's just deal with these real quick, we don't need these to be pop-ups. Do you see religious tolerance this campaign? We normally do, I think it's probably a good idea. So you can form the Chinese nation. You have to own, in the Chinese region, you have to own at least 135. And you have to own those certain ones, which we do. Oh, sorry, one of those ones, which we do. You can also wear the Imperial Crown when you have 100 cities and you're at peace. Awesome. And then you can do this, which makes you loads of stability, 100 legitimacy, add a whole bunch of things as a, as a accepted ch culture. You get a slice of the cake and decide our path. You get recently unified China. Fantastic. Okay, what else can we do? Once we're at peace, we're able to introduce imperial examinations. Cool. We can be, be all meritocratic and stuff. We are... Ooh, cool sound. We are Confucian. Which gives us national unrest down, pretty good. Missionary strength down, that's quite bad, but there's basically no one to convert, so we should be in the, in the immediate area, so we should be alright there. Uh, what else? Tolerance of heretics is okay. Improved relations up by 25%, very nice. So my plan for this game is really, sorry, this campaign, is to really learn how building works. I expect us to be rich. We're making crazy money compared to the other games I've played. We've got 31 base income. I want to learn how urbanization works, learn how to build, you know, which buildings to build, how good each one is, learn how uh, communication efficiency works, like how often should you build local administrations, should you build them in your cities, how many cities should you try and generate, all that kind of thing. But first off, if we can do any of that, we're going to need to win this war. Now, I have some missions here. Conquer Lighai, Lin, Lin Hai. I apologize in advance, by the way, my pronunciation is going to be... Pretty bad. Conquer Linghai or recover Lis Lishoi. Okay, so which of these two do you want to fight first? Yeah, so he has those protectorates, so we might be forced to become their tributary. Um, he doesn't want us to. Um, that's not good. I think he's he probably wants to come eat us. But we're quite a long way away from him. How many men has he got right now? Oh. He has less men than us. Okay. Manpower, by the way, holy hell. We have 235,000 manpower. 235,000. Because we've got so much pop. Just ridiculous pop. Look at this. L look at this. This is utterly insane. Absolutely crazy. Population plus 31,000. It's amazing. Especially if we could lower the autonomy a bit, which is going down here pretty quickly. Do we start? What do we start off with, buildings-wise? Hey, we have a renowned university already. Very nice. That's going to help. There's also a great city hall. 
workshop. No warehouse. Now I'm told these are very good. So I think I might build one of those immediately in the capital. The other cool thing about playing over here is that we already have meritocracy. It's called meritocracy, isn't it? Yes, we already have meritocracy, which is pretty nice. Okay, mission-wise, do I want to fight these guys or these guys? Well, we have a core on these guys. I want to fight these guys, ideally. They're a subject under Yuan right now. But if Yuan only has 10,000 troops, I feel like we could still declare war on these guys, crush them, and if Yuan comes, we'll just kill them. Maybe. These guys are the weakest. Let's let's target the weak first. We want to conquer that province. Sounds good. Okay, we have a special CB, the Chinese Unification, which is pretty great. Uh, Estates-wise, of course we don't have any estates yet. Let's build up to our force limit. Wow, force limit's high. Uh, we might as well set some, some warships building, because it'll take a while for them to go. Now in the other places, we've got seven. I'm probably going to go quite infantry heavy. Wow, this build's really quick. Why is that so quick? Huh. Don't know. We'll advance over here. I don't know, we've got hills here. We also start with a spectacular ruler. This guy is the person, I believe, who founded the, uh, the Ming Dynasty. So He's pretty crazy. Good. Look at him. Yeah. He's definitely the one we want. Okay, a little bit slow here at the start, I'm sure. We do have an ally. Should probably improve relations with them, just in case. Uh, yeah, okay, so they have kept in those silly arbitrary restrictions about no one but Christians being able to have personal unions. It's a shame. Oh, well. Uh, who else might be ally? You? They've reached their alliance limit. You? These guys are all under... Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> ah! Excuse me, I had to sneeze there. My bad. So I don't know if there's anyone who's going to be willing to accept an alliance. Oh, there will be quite a few, if once the court event fires. Hmm. Taiwan probably wouldn't be that good. Yui, I think they're quite strong. Uh, where are they? These guys down here, yeah, they'd be a good ally. Let's get an alliance with them. What is our alliance limit right now? Maybe three? Two? Not sure. We are a kingdom. <laughs> Look at that general. Welcome to Mirren Sixes very well. Very well. Where are you going? South. Okay, was that the court event? Can I ally now? <laughs> yes, but I can't send a diplomat for a couple of days. National decisions available. Okay, we can appropriate... Okay, so we've just got our church influence. Yes, it's none. Okay, we're going to try and keep our church influence as low as possible. We can appropriate church property. I guess that loses us some piety, and then... <laughs> like that'll do, even if we're not actually going to get anything out of it in terms of property. Principle of tolerance, I think sounds good. Okay, we are going to leave our forts on for now. Where are you going? Going straight for the siege in the floodplain. Uh, I guess that might be smart. Okay, they're training guys, good. This is my thinking. We're going to stand here, and then as soon as they start training guys, I can't go straight here. No, I can go close though. Once they start training guys, I'll run around killing them all. Hopefully they stay more disunited than I do. Oh, okay. Looting policy. New world paid. Sunni rebellion crushed. Okay. Oh, no. You just allied our enemy. But you, you were the chosen one. All right. Uh, Sunni rebellion crushed. The recent revolt against the Wan and the Confucian faith in Ming has been crushed. And its leaders have been rounded up and are sentencing. Uh, face sentencing. Okay. Do we want to gain some money? Get some religious unrest? Get some logistics and lose some unrest. Well, where are these provinces? Well, 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 basically, do we have any unrest anywhere? Like, we've got minus 10, minus 10. So it's about minus 10. And this would cause about 10. So yeah, let's just let's just take the legitimacy. We don't need the manpower. Looting policy. I think we're gonna... This is... A lot of this is our core land. Let's, let's heavily restrict... No, no, no. Let's just... Let's restrict... Mm, let's just let them loot. Uh, New World Plagues? Why not? Where are you going? Get out of my land. Han, sent into reliance with that enemy out. So you have allied these two. Hmm, that makes you a pretty tasty target to start off with. Although they do have an ally. Get out of my land. You're going to kill my guy when he finishes training in two days. 
So I've got to cancel him. Unfortunately, training stupidly continues even when there's enemy in that province that would cause him to die the moment he finished training. So, so we better do that. Like this. If he's going to... Yeah, he's... He's not being very smart. Refusal to compromise. Um, that's fine. I mean, like we already lost the, uh, the piety, which is all the only reason I did this. Go on, have a disease outbreak just before I come and crush you. That'd be glorious. The Wang's favor. Several competing schools of thought ran through the Hun Huanun society. Confucius scholars taught a set of rules that promoted order, prosperity, and respect for one's elders, while Buddhist priests preached about giving up attachments in order to achieve enlightenment. Legalist judges wanted to apply the law blindly and strictly, while Taoist philosophers wanted everything in moderation. Have the Wan, having the Wang, Wang show favor to one school would have lasting repercussions in Ming. Okay, Confucian dominance at court until the death. Okay, so until the death of our ruler, we get one of these benefits. Legalism gives one unrest, but that's not too bad. Yielding to up, stability increase up. And state maintenance. That's pretty great. How much are you spending on state maintenance right now? Yeah, crazy amounts. That would be fantastic. That's terrible. Um, that's pretty bad too. Yeah, legalism. Sounds excellent. Nice. Okay, as soon as these guys arrive. Tolerated heretics happen to us. Is that a... It must be a trigger. Oh yeah, and we also have this mandate claimant thing. Because we're revolting against the ruling dynasty. The Red Turban Rebellion would be an uprising influenced by the White Lotus Society members. And we targeted the Yan dynasty, eventually leading to its overthrowing. So we're tolerating heretics. As long as we make some concessions to the state religion, we might be able to permit them to practice their faith. Yes, we can tolerate heretics more. That's great. What is our current tolerances? Wow, our tolerance of two faith is lower than our tolerance of heretics. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Okay, as soon as these guys arrive, yeah. Oh, they've taken a bit of attrition. Let's smash them. Let's go down to speed two. I believe the estate's just spawned, which means a little corruption flag is going to appear here in just a moment when it finishes doing all its calculations. Wait for it. Oh, I'm a genius. All right, so uh, we've got this, all these guys now. Defense, oh, this is a defensive war. Ha ha ha. Which means I get free picks, right? No, free picks none. Why? Ah. If you're fighting a defensive war, when the loyalty is above 70, Okay, so we do want them to have loyalty above 70. Okay, we want financial support, force limit, or war relief. Let's go with some financial support. That didn't cost any loyalty. Interesting. Or oh, I think, because you're fighting a defensive war, you can deceive a free, free pick. Well, let's just take the free pick then, yeah. And defensive war support, we'll go with partial, which is free. They're going to get crazy numbers of soldiers from all of these estates. And they are reinforcing in, but I... Th oh, no, they're not. Our guys will. Need to wait a day before I can tell them to move? Why can't... Why can't I tell you to move here? What the heck? Oh, there we go. The Confusion Faith. Yes, I want all the pop-ups about religion, please. Okay, we are crushing it here, it looks like. Yep, absolutely annihilated them. Mostly because of morale, though, so that's not as big a victory as it could have been. Where are you going? No, 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 no. Let's split in half. Actually, no, let's stay focused. We need to go and crush these guys. But everyone but that army can rally here. Okay, we've got an alliance request from Taiwan. Oh. Tin Wan is not at all where I was expecting it to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not ally them? Oh, I hope you're not in a defensive war. No, they're an attacker. Good. So we are actually the defender. What can we take in this war? This is going to cause ridiculous over uh, aggressive expansion. That's crazy. Good lord. Maybe there's an event-based peace deal here. Oh no, because it's caused. We just have to occupy it and then we'll get the surrender timer. Right, right, right. Cool. Easy win there. And here. Let's go to speed 2 while we're managing this. You guys keep rallying together. We'll go after these seven. As soon as we can. Okay, they've all rallied up here. We want to catch them while they're still on low morale. And we can keep exterminating the little stacks as well. Fantastic. Yeah, because the population over here is so high, taking any land is going to cause ridiculous aggressive expansion. 
I'm not sure how the game's going to manage that. That could be, it could make this pretty challenging. An alliance offer from Kui. Kui? Looks like Kui to me. Where are they? These guys. Um, you look like you're getting the short end of the stick up there. Um, might pull through though. Yeah, go on. We'll accept that. Oh god, I hope they don't send me a defensive call right now. That would be really unfortunate. Let's just finish off these guys and then we'll go and hunt down their army down here. Ah, oh, I can't actually transport down there. Okay. Fort situation. Level 5 fort here. Level 1 fort here. Level 5 fort here. Okay. So, big armies split in half. And take the two level 5 forts. Smaller armies. Let's split up. Siege down all of the uh, less significant provinces. Uh, this is a level 2 fort. Okay, so those guys should handle that. Should be able to handle that, that is. Okay, more of them have spawned. So we will divert our troops somewhat to deal with them. It's there, I want to do you guys. Okay, good. We're winning this so far. Have they gone... Uh... Oh, but there's the big army. Have they gone res looting or something? Decorative generalship posts and low development level 2 the discipline. Let's send these guys south and these guys to reinforce here as soon as they can because I don't want to lose any battles against these guys. Okay, there's our reinforcements. Now that the good general's here, I think they have no chance. Easy wins on the little ones, obviously. This is level 5 fort. We need a lot more men to siege that, so let's not stand there suffering attrition for no need. Okay, this siege is going fine. I'd rather not siege with Cav, so, and, but I need enough men to box those guys in safely. Okay. Can I get here? No. I guess you guys might as well reinforce in. Just to, you know, be involved. Oh yeah, advisors, right. We're making crazy money. Oh, these guys have got a kind of gold thing around them. I wonder what that, what that means. National autonomy decay. Less, heh, less autonomy sounds pretty great right now. But maybe I should be taking a level 2 one. Missionary strength is pretty useless though. Let's go with him. Um, tax, trade efficiency and tax modifier sounds pretty great. We've got the money for this, so let's get the best advisors pretty much most of the time. Uh, morale of armies up sounds pretty great. Yep, let's get him. And do we want to focus anything? Oh yeah, what idea group do we start with? Oh, we start with administrative. That's so good. And we're, uh, we're 13 years ahead of time. We're going to be rolling in admin point, uh, in points generally. Let's not focus anything for now. Glorious success just there. Let's uh, we go here. No, can't go to either of those. Okay. So their big army is over here. So we just need to send enough over here to kind of deal with these guys. So this is level 5 fort. Remind me how many troops level 5 fort takes. Is it 10? I honestly can't recall. Let's send 10. Uh, with a siege general. And see. Then we'll know for that one. Uh, yeah. The infantry can be swapped with one of the cav there. Just want to try and make sure it's no, no excess siege there. It takes... Yes, it is indeed 10 people to siege this. Okay. Now to siege this one is another 10. And we should really make it the army with the good general. Nice. And then we can outnumber this fort to speed up the siege speed there. In case you don't know, having the fort outnumbered, I think it's like when you have double the required troops, you can get that. Oh, the fort defense is being modified hugely by our mandate claimant thing. Do the other people have that modifier? Or is that just something special to Ming? I don't know. Alright, let's have these guys rally to... Well, yeah, let's send them up here. We can ease up even more. Something we should consider is keeping this war... Dra dragging this war on for ages. Because as long as this war is going, we're going to have our estates thinking we're in a defensive war. Which is going to mean that they give us all kinds of, you know, free troops. For no... Uh, no loyalty loss, which is pretty great. There's the cav. I've got a couple of ships. I have to block. They don't seem to have taken their ships out of port, which is odd. 
Let's just peek out and see if they come for us. They don't seem to be interested in coming for us, but we must keep an eye on that. I want to be able to see their, uh, their troops here. Alright, let's send these guys up. Oh! <laughs> yeah, okay. I failed in my instruction to myself that I should pay very close attention to the navy. Well, we don't need a navy. We do. We do need a navy. Can I retreat you yet? No, I can. Alright, retreat back in. Okay. Awesome, but that is the end of the first episode of our Heirs to the Empire campaign. Next time, we'll finish up winning this war, I suspect, and then we shall uh, turn our ambitions outwards. If we focus south while staying allied to these three as a kind of buffer against Yuan. You, I'm going to pronounce this Yuan. Please do correct me if that's wrong, but it looks, looks like Yuan to me. But until the next episode, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you very soon. Goodbye.